Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, Mohamed El Zayedi from ESC Clermont Business School. This is the last session of the Facebook and YouTube live uh, series that we have started this week. And uh, now we are going to see the final program, uh, the MSc in Project Management, which is a specialized master's degree offered by ESC Clermont Business School. Today, I have the pleasure to host so Sebastian Dwaya and Marina Nyama. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Could you start by introducing yourself to the public, please? Yes, of course. So I'm uh, Sebastian Dwaya, the head of the Master of Science in Project Management. And I am Marina Amwanyama. I am from Ghana. And I was a student at ESC in the project management program, which I completed last year. So I defended my thesis um, in September. So I'm, I'm actually um, awaiting um, graduation. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everyone once again. Uh, for now, we are going to move directly to the pitch of the program. So Sebastian, please do provide the pitch of the program within one minute. So projects are getting more and more complex in an ever-increasing international and multicultural context. So this program aims at training professionals on every aspect of project management, particularly the first one, the strategic and business aspect, to understand why we are doing projects, what are the expectations of all stakeholders. Then also the technical aspect of it, how to plan, how to manage a budget, how to manage risks, and so on. And of course, the most important part, how to develop leadership and all the soft skills associated to it around communication, facilitation, innovation, and so on. But anyway, all projects are not the same. So why should we use the same methodology for all of them? This is why the project is also the program, sorry, is also covering both methods, the standard one as uh, recommended by the Project Management Institute, the PMI, but also a more lean and agile approach so that each of our students will have a tool set in which they can pick the tools they need, whatever the project they have to manage. Thanks a lot for introducing the program to the public, Sebastian. Now we are going to move uh, right into the questions section. We remind you that you can uh, ask us the questions in a direct manner through the comments section of the Facebook and YouTube Live that's going on. We will be extremely delighted to answer all of your questions. Uh, we had already received questions also from our public and we're gonna start by addressing those. And then if ever there are further questions coming up during the direct live, like I said, we will be happy to uh, uh, do so and to provide you with further details related to the MSc in project management. So the first question that we had received from Lucy that I would like to address to Sebastian, is the course relevant to the current economic uh, situation? So uh, as I explained briefly in the pitch, um, yes, uh, basically the program is designed around two main principles. The first one is that you need to do in order to learn. So it's really learning by doing and you will have uh, at least two capstone projects that will go from the first semester till the end of the second one, where you can really apply what you're going to learn on uh, in the different uh, theoretical courses. So this is the first aspect to really learn uh, by doing once again in any situation. And the second point to really answer your question is that not only we are covering the standard way of managing projects th through the main uh, knowledge area, budget, planning, risk, quality, and so on, which are very standard, but also we teach to the students how to be agile, how to be reactive, how to be really flexible and adaptive, whatever the situation they are facing. And this is exactly what we need in the kind of situation that we are living today. We have many examples of uh, problem in the supply chain, problem uh, regarding procurement, many things uh, regarding the, the current crisis, where a lot of flexibility or, or a lot more flexibility could have solved many situations. Okay, excellent. Uh, the second question that I'd like to address to uh, Marina, what kind of projects do the students carry out throughout this course? 
Um, so <clears throat> we carried out a, a wide range of projects. Um, uh, for instance, um, so the thing with the project is that it, they gave us the opportunity to interact with um, professionals. And so, for instance, my team and I worked on a project with um, a company, Lemo, that produces laser machines. And we had the chance to study the product, which was the laser machine. We had the chance to interact with the project owner to design documents and, um, you know, um, work to meet the specifications and the expectations of the project um, owner. Aside that, we had event projects, and so we collaborated with um, organizations like the PMI and the um, Auvergne Agile Association, as well as we had scenario projects. And so we worked on case studies uh, with uh, Michelin being an example. We had to work on um, creating a model. And so it's made use of creativity and the various tools of project management. And so you realize that um, there are very various uh, projects that we worked on to give us a 360 um, experience of project management. So yeah, it's, it's important to, of course, highlight that, yeah, we, you are working on real projects and in direct contact with uh, the companies okay moving on to the next question that we had received from kyle that i'd like to address to sebastia what importance does relying on lean and agile methods represent so um there are several ways to answer but i think the main one is that in uh, the current way of doing projects the problem is that we are using the same methodology whatever the project are you building a dam on a river? Are you preparing the Olympics? Are you uh, starting a new business? The standard methodology recommends you the same steps, okay? So why should we do that? When you uh, use a more lean approach, a more agile approach, you're going to adapt what you're doing in your project to uh, the goal of the project and, and the, the, the different types of projects. And uh, what is extremely important, and Marina can also uh, testimon uh, give a testimonial around that, is that what is important is um, to learn from the failures. One of the lean principles is fail fast, fail often, which is something totally different from the standard project approach. And this is also something that you have the opportunity to do in your uh, academic path through the projects because learning from your failure will imply that you will do better the next time you will have to do it. So as you can see, there is a focus on the traditional way of doing projects, but also in new and innovative approaches. So as we have said, so the lean and agile methods to manage projects because you can't really manage every project within uh, the same mentality. Moving on to the practical side, Marina, uh, which the question that we had received from Jad, what kind of professional experience do the students obtain throughout this course? Perhaps you can talk about your experience uh, inside the company. Um, yeah, sure. And so uh, the thing with the, um, this program is that there are students who are in who take the program and become interns in other companies, and there are also work study pro, um, um, contracts. And so that is what I was on for mine. Um, I worked with Michelin on a mission in CSR, which was um, related to sustainable development. And so the thing is that I get to interact with professionals. I get to use everything that I study in class on um, the field as well in the companies. And so um, it's a really a hands, it's a really hands-on experience with professionals, not just in class, because um, as I said um, earlier, um, project management, well, it's more about um, the tools in class being applicable to the things we do in field. And so some of our instructors were professionals already. So we're able to get first information from them. And then in my case, in the companies, I was able to also um, interact with professionals, use the things that I studied in class. And then for students who had to do internship, um, they also were able to apply for um, jobs in different fields and be able to use the various tools of project management in all these fields. Yeah, so once again, we are talking about Michelin. Uh, it, we have seen in one of the previous live sessions before the MIM, Alaika, who was doing a work study contract in Michelin as well. So of course, that is a proof of the strong relationship that we have with the corporate world, especially with uh, Michelin, which is a huge player and whose headquarters is located here in Clermont-Ferrand. 
Okay, and now uh, we would like to address another question that was asked by uh, Geraldine uh, regarding the profile before coming. So Geraldine is saying, I'm a fourth year student in Kenya pursuing business administration. Project management is my area of specialization. So am I eligible for the MSc in project management? Yes, of course. Um, we are really looking at all, pro all types of profile, okay? Because what makes, let's say, the power of a project team is the diversity within the project team itself, okay? So if you have only uh, people having the same background or the same skill set, it's useless. It's going to fail. We need to have complementary people. So this is why some of our students have an engineering background and they have some skills associated to that. Others have a more business background, which is good as well with other skills. And this is how uh, the projects are really progressing well because people are complementary. This is, this is uh, once again, something which is strongly promoted in Agile methods, particularly. And uh, if you come and join us, you will learn that we cannot have only rabbits or turtles in the same project team. We need both. Definitely. Yeah. It, it creates a, a major and a much bigger advantage. And uh, uh, it, it adds value to the, to the team and to reaching, of course, the strategic objectives later on. When you have different backgrounds, people coming from engineering, commercial, business uh, backgrounds mixed all together to work on a common project. Okay, uh, Marina, how about uh, uh, the type of courses that are provided? Is there um, more of a focus on the theoretical or the practical side? That's a question that we had received from Imad. Uh, I would say that it's more practical than theoretical. Um, but of course, we do study a lot of theory. The point is that, and Sebastian said that earlier, is that um, we learn by doing. And so even though we do learn a lot of theory, um, the focus is to be able to use it practically. And so um, um, the goal, the ultimate goal of the program is to be practical. And I will say that the whole course um, is practical. I mean, in, in, in terms of the other tools that we acquired in um, cost um, and resource management, information systems, supply chain management, we realized that we still have to use them practically. So in general, I would say that the courses are geared towards being practical. Yeah, so it's, it's the same, in fact, it's the same concept that is uh, integrated into all of our programs that are offered the mixture between the academic part, the theory, and the learning by doing, as well as the professional experience or the applied knowledge later on. And uh, Sebastian, one other question that we had received from Joe regarding the link to the business world. What kind of partnerships are there with the companies? Before uh, taking the word from you, I'd like to remind you that you can still ask your questions during the live sessions itself, and we will be extremely happy to address your queries. Okay, so as Marina said, most of our uh, instructors are practitioners, okay? So they are coming from external companies and they are sharing their knowledge and experience with our students. So of course, as we said already, we have some practitioners coming from Michelin, which is um, obviously a very uh, uh, important player in project management, in particularly in industrial project management, so they really know what they're talking about. But we don't have only this kind of industrial companies. We have also people from Accenture, Accenture being a, a consultancy IT company, okay? They have another approach to project management, which is complementary to the one of Michelin. And apart from that, we have also many entrepreneurs that have built their own companies. Uh, and they are uh, giving some classes around, for instance, soft skills, around risk management. So all these entrepreneurs, they have their own experience that they can share once again with the students based on a totally different scales. scale. Sorry. So this is why it's once again very complementary, including into the uh, professors, because we have people from very big companies, we have academics, of course, and we have people that are from small startups, uh, entrepreneurs. So all of that is extremely uh, useful uh, for all of our students. Excellent. Now we have received a question from uh, Favor that she would like to particularly uh, uh, address to Marina. Hello, I have a question for Marina. How did your language skill uh, impact your work study experience? Um, well, 
I am, well, I came to ESC not being fluent in English, um, in French, sorry. And so my work study um, contract was um, a mission that was fully English uh, because I had to uh, collaborate with people from America, from Asia, you know, other, other continents. And so the main language was English. So in that aspect, I wasn't really affected. But the truth is that in order to thrive in France, you will need French. And so... It's important to learn French along the way. I was taking a lot of um, language classes for French and I'm quite um, good in the language now, but for work study, if you get a company as big as um, Michelin, you don't really have to worry with um, the French language, especially if your mission is English based. And so it, it, did, it did not really have a huge effect on uh, my, my work experience, except for the fact that um, the less French you speak, the more relatively difficult it is to integrate yourself in a company, unless it's as big as um, Michelin, you have uh, several people speaking English as well. Yeah, we have seen in the previous lives that it was, it was always the same uh, uh, speech that, yeah, of course, there are opportunities that are mainly present in English, but it, of course, it is much less common then opportunities that do involve some certain fluency in French, which means the better French you speak, the easier it becomes to broaden your horizon and apply for also uh, more jobs. Okay, there is another question that we received from Maher, Sebastian, uh, who's saying, having five years of experience in the insurance field, a field which is not really directly related to projects, do you think it could be hard for me to change the field of work after having the MSc in project management? So first, uh, Maher, we are very happy to welcome you in September because I remember having done the interview with you as well as favor for the previous question. But anyway, apart from that, um, I, I would say it's exactly the opposite. Attending this program will give you much more possibilities to change the field of work you, you want to, uh, to apply for after graduating. Uh, your experience in insurance is, of course, a, a very good thing, okay? This will be something that you, you can share with your teammates in your different projects, and you will bring your own experience, your own skills, but you will also benefit from, once again, people with an engineering background or a more industrial or IT background, and this is what is going to make you more, let's say, maybe it's not the right word, but more valuable on the work market, meaning that you will have many skills after graduating because of these exchanges and shared projects then after then before coming so i would say it's uh, of course a, a really huge chance for you to attend this program and improve increase the number of skills that you will have of course and of course marina is one of the uh, great examples that we would like to show but also there are lots of success stories of students uh, coming, for example, from Lebanon, because I know that's where Mayer is coming from, who are able to secure very good opportunities in France, and not just from Lebanon, but of course from many different countries, who are later able to integrate into the project management uh, field of the companies, right? Yes, of course. I have an example in May of a, of a Lebanese student uh, just last year. Okay, he did uh, an internship in Bouygues. Okay, Bouygues is a quite uh, big and famous company in France and in the world in the construction part of Bill, of Bouygues. Sorry, and he was hired by Bouygues just at the end of the internship. So this is an example uh, amongst many others of uh, a Lebanese uh, Lebanese student. But we have examples of uh, Indian students, uh, students from many countries all over the world uh, of this kind of success stories. And of course, doing an internship after graduating is a good way to find a job, not only in France, but uh, wherever you want, in fact. And perhaps, Sebastian, you can shed the light on the difference between the internship and the work study contract that uh, Marina was involved in. Yes. So uh, if you are, let's say, in the classic track, it means that you're going to attend two semesters, okay, two academic semesters with us. And at the end of the second semester, you will start your internship, four to six months. This is the same principle, whatever the Master of Science program you want to do. And if you are in the work study track, okay, that we call in France apprenticeship, it means that you're going to spend, in average, two weeks in a company and one week in, at school, uh, and that till the end of the academic year. So it's really a, a mix of 
working in a real company and being paid for that, by the way, and attending classes, doing projects on an academic standpoint at school. And this is an option which is open to uh, all of our students. Of course, there are some uh, conditions to respect, okay, in terms of age, in terms of uh, type of contract and so on. But uh, Marina is the perfect example of uh, the fact that a foreign student not speaking French can do uh, an apprenticeship all along the academic year and have a, a very uh, successful experience at the end. Yeah, for the work study contract, it's also important to keep in mind that you must have spent the previous year in France already in order to be eligible for this contract. So people who are arriving for the first time in France in September, they would not have this possibility. But someone like Marina, for example, who was already in France studying in another university and in another course, she respected this condition and so she was eligible for uh, this kind of contract. Uh, another question that we have received so from uh, Gitanjali, uh, would the curriculum cover uh, real-time scenarios for a strategic decision aspect? Yes, of course. This is one of the added value of doing a real projects with a, a real companies. So I have two examples in mind. Uh, last year, we did a, a project for a small company, which is uh, Aku Design. Okay. Uh, the year before, we did uh, another project for another company, which was Sipam. These companies are small companies, and their main problem is uh, how to get a bigger market. So in this case, we did a study for them, okay, which is basically the opportunity phase, feasibility phase at the very beginning of a project to find bigger markets for them, particularly for CPAM. Should we go this way? Should we go this way with these customers or these other customers? So this is something that we did with them. And this is a highly strategic decision that we did for them real time. And another uh, example, for instance, as Marina said, we are doing also some event projects with uh, some uh, student groups. And last year, uh, yes, the year that is just finished now, uh, we had a decision to take as well regarding an event that we wanted to organize, a maker fair, which is a speci specific type of event. But because of the coronavirus situation and so on, we had to cancel it with all the implication regarding the sponsors, regarding the people attending the event and so on. So this was also a very strategic decision that we had to take early in the process, uh, applied to an event project, so something very different from uh, startups or industries or IT, okay? So these are two examples showing you that we are really dealing with real projects for real companies. That's clear enough. Uh, thank you, Sebastian. Moving on to another question that I'll take the chance to, to answer directly from Bismillah. If I can't enter France during the first semester, can I start my st studies from the second semester? Or perhaps I I think I'd better provide the word once again to Sebastian. So I repeat the question once again. If I can't enter France during the first semester, can I start my studies from the second semester? You have two options, in fact. Either you can decide to start the first semester online because everything will be available live uh, as if you were in the classroom, okay? So you can attend the classes even if you are on the other, on the other side of the world. So this is the first option. But if you prefer to um, come and join us later in January for the second term, this is also feasible. This is not feasible in all of our programs because some programs, they have a kind of sequence between the first term and the second one. But for project management, we consider that um, if you start by the first one or the second one, it's feasible. And the best example is that we have uh, this year uh, a student in this case coming from Afghanistan. He was not able for visa reasons to attend the, the first semester. So he joined only on the second one and is going to do the first one uh, next year, starting in September. So this is totally feasible and uh, we are used to that. So as you can see, it's part of being agile and also adapting, of course, to the different circumstances that international students are facing. Some complications, of course, might arise this year. And of course, we would be treating the demands individually uh, later on. OK, uh, uh, I think we have only two more minutes left. So if there is an, we have the time to take one more question. So if there are any questions that you might have, please go ahead and ask it in the comments section. Back to uh, Marina, so now that you are done with your work experience in Michelin and with the graduation soon, so what is your career plan later on? Um, so now I am um, either looking into PhD 
um, because I already had a, a research qualification uh, certificate. And so that's, that is um, the main thing I am working on now, trying to complete a couple of theses. But aside that, because of the project management, I had a chance to work in several companies and have received a couple of offers, but um, it had to do as well with um, the visa and the work permit and all that. But in general, there are so many opportunities um, open once you have um, a, a master degree in project management and I have experienced that. And so that combined with the possibility of doing PhD is what I am looking forward to in the future. Yeah, as we have seen in the previous live, so the programs do qualify for the PhD for people like Marina who would like to orient more on the academic side. Of course, there are certain conditions to respect, but yeah, both tracks are available. It's more common for the professional MSc uh, programs to prepare for the job, but yeah, some students, they would like to take a different track. The last question that we are going to take from Imad that I'd like to address to Sebastian, how does the age impact the internship or work opportunities after graduation? Because it's common for us to welcome students who are uh, um, older than 30 years old. So in this case, how does it work? Yeah, so first point is that it's a very good point as well as a, a previous question. If you have a different background, it's good. It's diversity. If you have a different age, it's good as well because you're going to make uh, all the other students benefit from your experience as well. So this is something good that we are looking for. Uh, in terms of finding an internship or finding a job, same thing. It's always better to uh, have a degree to graduate if you already have a bit of experience. It will increase your chances to find a job because uh, as you all know, when you are applying for a job, most of them, they are asking for a bit of experience. They are not asking only for fresh graduates, okay? So if you have already a bit of experience, it's increasing your chances to be hired for an internship, maybe, but for a job, for sure. So don't take it as a drawback, according to me, and based on our experience, it could be a, a very differentiated uh, advantage. Okay, great. So as you can see, diversity of age, of uh, background, and of even the multicultural aspect that is there since we welcome students. So from different age groups, different countries, and even a different study background. So uh, in this case, I think that's the end of it. Uh, if, there, if there is any sort of uh, last recommendation that you would like, to give Sebastian, I would like to invite you so to provide one last word for our followers. So to recap, as we said, apart from the different methodologies you're going to learn with us, standard, lean, agile, apart from the, the experience you're going to share with the practitioners that are going to teach you some uh, of their skills, uh, the one of the main points of this program is also the international experience. Uh, last year, for instance, there were 20 different nationalities in the same classroom. So this is also something which is really an added value of this program because it's going to develop a lot of soft skills uh, whatever the background you have, whatever the age you have, and you will always have something to learn from these uh, people from very different backgrounds. Thank you so much. Marina, perhaps a recommendation that you would like to provide to our followers, the people who are interested by this program, to have a successful career upon finishing it? Um, well, I would say that it's important to at least have some basics in French. It's very valuable here. And um, that aside that I would always recommend ESC because it has personally given me a lot of opportunities. I've made a lot of connections. As Sebastian said, it's an international community. And so come prepared with the mentality of meeting different people of um, different backgrounds. And of course, uh, it's located in Clermont, which is a very cultural city. And so, yes, um, uh, just uh, come to ESC and enjoy the environment, enjoy the city and the people. Excellent. Thank you so much, Marina. Uh, we would like to remind you of uh, some important details related to the admission process. We remind you so that the admission process is still going on. Do apply online very soon since the deadline is the end of July. So you have one more month to go. The applications are done in a very flawless process, online process through the application portal. 
where there is a file to uh, construct and then there is the video interview later on where we look at your motivation study background and all of those important elements if you have any further questions that we couldn't cover during this live please be my guest and address me by email directly and i'd be extremely glad to answer your doubts so i guess that's the end of this full series of uh, 12 facebook and youtube live sessions that we have organized starting from this week it has been a true pleasure to present you all our programs including of course so the msc in project management so thank you so much marina and thanks sebastian for your presence today thank you very much see you soon at esc clermont and I'd like to thank everyone once again for their participation, not just in this live session, but on all the previous sessions that we have organized. It has been really interesting to present to you the programs that we offer, the student life, uh, life in France, all of those important things that you have in mind to help you have a very clear and comprehensive image to make sure that it's the best decision for you. So thank you so much. It has been a true pleasure and I'll be looking forward to connecting you once again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.